Well, hello, my friends. My midweek video turned out to be a very late in the week video, but it's going to be a fun one. I think you will enjoy some hair and makeup tricks, just a few. A get ready with me practice for our coming up this weekend, our 19 Roaring Twenties Gala, and I'm practicing my makeup, so you'll help me with that. Also, you'll see some new Mother's Day gifts, one of which is a beautiful planter, and I'll be out in the garden doing some planting, and you'll see an array of florals that came from Home Depot when I was picking out a plant. I couldn't decide what to get. And at the end, we had a lovely day at Matthew and Cindy's with the little children playing and enjoying all the cousins. And I love to see that. And some of the daughters and daughter-in-laws too. So stay tuned. I think you're going to enjoy this, especially my new beautiful gift. I wanted to come to you from the garden and show you what I picked up yesterday because Matthew and Cindy gave me this beautiful ceramic blue and white, different color blue and white, matches the colors of my china that I love. It also matches our new rug in our garden here. And our umbrella too. I found some flowers at Home Depot and the display of color astounded me. It was absolutely beautiful. And I had a hard time picking out what I wanted to plant in this beautiful pot. I did find some beautiful little pink and white flowers. These are dianthus, I believe, and they will get bigger. Every year I try and plant a foxglove, and this one is a pink one. They didn't have a purple, but it has lots of new bulbs on it. I have had problems with rabbits and squirrels loving my foxglove. So I think I'll keep it up on a table, but I think that is what I'm going to plant here probably has to be replanted pretty soon, but I thought it had to go in this pot right now. So I've tried to break up this root ball somewhat. My mozi is now sitting in his chair under the umbrella. He's here. It's almost coffee and breakfast time too. I want my maple. <laughs> right now, I wanted something beautiful for Matthew's pot. I love it. What do you think? I think, isn't foxglove supposed to be poison? Yes. <laughs> but it didn't poison the squirrels, huh? <laughs> Who knows when we had squirrels. I just hope that that squirrel that's been peeking out from down here is not gonna go for this. Isn't this gorgeous? I just love the pot. Who are those birds, Moose? That's the woodpecker. What's he yapping about? He's always complaining about something. Look, isn't this beautiful? This one is tall. It still has buds to go out. But what I love is my pot. Absolutely beautiful. I wanted to show our new patio rug. You can hose it off or spill dirt on it or whatever. And doesn't the pot look beautiful with it? water these. They don't have any water. Okay. It's time to go in, practice my makeup for the last time. I'm going to try the darker smudgy eyes. I'm going to do a little demonstration of how I do this roll hairdo. First, I use my dry shampoo. I spray the shampoo on the roots of the sides, the top, the crown, and it fluffs all up, gives it lots of volume. And then I did have a little circle thingy that I cut in half to make my two little rats because I can't find them in white anywhere. So 
I take a portion of the side of the hair and you might use a comb to do this. You hold it up, you take your little rat and you start at the end and you roll it and you just keep rolling. I'm gonna look in the mirror here and keep rolling until you reach the head, at which point you take a bobby pin or something to secure it. Oh, I know you're not supposed to do this with your teeth. Always have. And you put a bobby pin in to secure the curl. And there you have it. You do the same thing to the other side, pull down some little things in the front. And in the back, you can curl it up. Usually I'll take my little curlers and just curl it straight up. But right now I'm trying to keep it off my face to be able to do my makeup. So I'm gonna do it on the other side. And this way it gives a little fullness to your face. You do have to start with a nice part in the middle. And in order to get the volume, do start with the dry shampoo. So take my finger, sort of get a good section of hair, hold it out. Pull it back, roll it, just keep rolling. It's so easy. And you wanna keep it a little bit on the high side and secure it to the head. And I hope they're even. Voila, not too bad. Pull your little thingies down. Sometimes you have to wax these or wet them. Um, or just use some spray or something to keep them down. Now my, my hair is back off my face. I'll leave it like this for now. So now I'm gonna start on my makeup. I did put a little bit of lipstick on. I moved so in a little bit closer here to give you a better idea as to how I do my Get Ready With Me. I have a, a few products here that I have been using religiously. And that's not to say I won't try new things. In fact, I do have a couple of new products that perhaps in a future video, I'm going to share with you to basically see how they do. As you know, I start off my makeup with my castor oil, my black Jamaican castor oil, mainly because makeup will stick on my skin and not spread. I have dry skin and it spreads very nicely with this oil, which is a nice thick oil. So I will start that first. Cheeks, under the eyes, forehead. I even put it on the lids, my mobile lids. And I wanna make sure I don't get makeup on my nice new caftan from Dubby, which I will share later and show you the beautiful sleeves. It's a captain jacket. So I think that's it. We're ready to go. The only other products I basically use, a light camo concealer from e.l.f. My e.l.f. illuminating primer, and that's all it is. No foundation. My shine stick, I don't have my glasses on, but I love this one. I'll put it uh, in the description box just to let you know. My Palladio Dark Lipstick, when I put that on to make it shine a bit and give it a glow, I put an old rose mauve color on top that's a chrome to make it pop a little bit. And my Essence Princess Mascara and a little bit of my City Lights Maybelline just a light dusting of a light brown, very light on the lids. And my little pencil that I fill in my disappearing eyebrows here in the middle. And I do, I am for this particular video going to put more than I usually do with the pencil under here. I do have to get a good smudgy type one and then I'll be smudging it a little bit better. And this, Get Ready With Me is going to be a tryout for my makeup that I'm going to wear this Saturday night, which is the 1920s Roaring Twenties Gala. Well, we have already showed you in um, one of the last videos our outfits. And I only use one brush right now, and that's for the uh, eyeshadow. Hopefully I'll get around to putting other things on with brushes, but right now I don't. So I have switched my routine. 
I used to put my illuminating primer on first and then put the camo concealer under the eyes to brighten the eyes a little bit up here and the cheeks to hide the dark spots. I would do that after this, but other people seem to switch it around and do it the other way. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the camo on first. I'm gonna try and rush this up a bit. A little bit under the eyes, brighten here. You're supposed to brighten above your eyebrows too. Laugh lines. I like to do this as quickly as possible. I'm not one who really enjoys the art. Now, you're supposed to stipple it on, not rub, which I have tended to do sometimes. Oh, I should have put some on the eyelids too because I do have pigmentation on the eyelids too. A little bit up here, brighten up this area. I should maybe speed this up a little bit. So I'm going to wipe a little bit of that off. I do blot a little bit if I think it's too thick anywhere. Then my e.l.f. blush. I haven't been using a contour. I sort of use the blush as a contour and it's a rosy color. Start up at the top of the ear on the side of the face, come down outside the cheekbone. I like to give it a little curl because it emphasizes the cheekbones that way. And a little bit up here to look healthy. Okay, just rub it in. My daughters are always reminding me to blend. I say that every time, but it's important because I've gone on camera a couple of times and forgotten. Now it's hard, this is natural light. I'm sitting in front of a window in the, or the front of the cottage and I'm getting some nice light here. You know, I was going to follow Nicole Johnson's idea of doing the eyes first and guess what? I forgot because I'm not used to doing it. I uh, realized that she does it so that any fallout from the makeup doesn't get on your makeup. And that's a smart idea. So I probably will try and remember to do that from now on. So now I, as you can see, the one on the end is all used up and it's the lightest tan, I guess you'd say. So now what I do is I blend a little bit of the dark brown, a little bit of the lighter, and then try and mix it in here and hope it doesn't come out too dark. And then I just go back and forth. I don't put any shine or color on. I used to like it, but now I think it's better if I don't. Now I'm going to go a little bit darker than I usually do, mainly because this makeup is going to be the, t the way I will do my eyes for the gala on Saturday night. Because when I look at all the pictures of the 1920 models, it all seems to be a very dark eye. I don't think being white haired and fair skinned that I could go too dark. Whoa, now I have to lighten that one up. I did go too dark. Too much dipping into the dark. This one might be okay, but definitely this one, no. Ooh, see it does disappear when you blot, doesn't it? Now the trouble is trying to match them up. Maybe I think they're okay. A little bit of light up on the top, on, up under the brow. I think that might be it. Now I take this little stick I was talking about and I will do my smudge line under here. First I make a line under both eyes. And you know, somewhere I did have a smudge brush, believe it or not. Maybe this one will do. And then you're supposed to, it's not a smudge brush, I know that. And then you go in and try and smudge it. Now I normally wouldn't do this for my regular makeup, but because it's that great Gatsby 20s look, maybe that's it. I'm not going to do any wet lines, dry lines, all that, because 
I just think I'll stick with this. Now for filling in the brows. Now those 1920s brows are very skinny, hardly any hairs, just one line drawn here. That's not me. So I am going to fill in a little bit in here because it it's a, too wide in here. It should be a little bit closer. Just a little bit and I make strokes going up. I also like to fill in the tail and that's that. Here's my shine. I have various shines. This particular one I like. It's sort of a light pink, very pale, infallible L'Oreal product. So here we go. The shine I usually do on the apple of my cheek and up, smile, up. I do in between the eyes here, maybe a little bit above the eyebrows. I don't know whether the 20s had much shine, but I do like my shine, so I can't give that up. I will still have that. And then blend. I like the fact that it tends to brighten under the eyes. Not too distracting on the tip of the nose. There we go. Okay, and I guess the final application is the Essence Princess Mascara. This takes a while, a couple of coats, so I'll come back when it's on. Now, I don't know whether that's dark enough for the 1920s, but I think that's the best I can do. Maybe I'll do better that night. Last thing to do is my lipstick. And I know I could use a bright red, but I still think I prefer my Palladio. I have my Palladio lipstick. I believe this is the Palladio which I love, and I believe it's called Velvet Wine. It is very dark, a dark wine, and I'm going to do the Cupid Lips. If you remember, I tried those out before. Now the way, I have to look in the mirror to do this. The way I'm going to do it is I do one pop there. Okay, I'm gonna put my mirror up here by me. And then I will do another pop there. And what I've done is I've accentuated, not done the middle, down here I will do it. And I've accentuated beyond my lips. Then, from what I've read, they say don't go to the outer edges of your lips. The same with the bottom. Try and keep it. Ooh, that looks pretty good. I think we'll stick with that. When I do that, I just have to make sure that I don't fill in my cupies. I just got lipstick on my teeth. I did get a, a hint once on how to make sure you don't get lipstick on your teeth unless you've already done it. <laughs> I think it was Teresa who showed me how to do this. This is how they do it, the pros on TV do it. They stick their finger in their mouth, point your finger, all the way to the end, and guess what comes off on your finger? The lipstick, therefore it will not come off on your lips. Good trick, Teresa. So I think that's it. I don't know whether I forgot anything, but a few products goes a long way. And that's my 1920s look. I might do more smudgies on the eye. From her mommy. Say mama. Woo! Hey, sweetie. Woohoo! <laughs> Are you going to get wet?
Now, I do want to show you the beautiful caftan jacket that my daughter, Dubby, gave me for Mother's Day. And I absolutely love it. In fact, I think that I will pack it this weekend when we stay overnight at the hotel after the ball and wear it the next morning to brunch when all the daughters and sons and, and everyone meet and we have the good hash about the night before. So it's a beautiful, first of all, it's from a catalog that she uh, buys things from all the time. She has exquisite taste in clothes. And the catalog is called A Time For Us, I believe. I will put this in the description box down below when she gives me the rest of the information. It's a very soft uh, vicos, but it's, um, it's almost like a soft linen, not a hard one, very, very soft. And almost with a little sheen design in it, the flowers are all embroidered, all up and down and around. And the, the sleeves are the beautiful large caftan sleeves. It's not a long caftan, it's more of a jacket, but I love the colors and I, I just love the design. As you know, I am a big caftan fan. And it's a shorter type of a jacket. So thank you, Debbie. I absolutely love it. And that lovely yellow shirt, it's a beautiful blouse with ruffle sleeves, short sleeves. Dubby says she's trying to get a pop of yellow into our fashion sense for the summer. And I think I'll enjoy that. So I think that's it. I want to thank you all for, for watching. I do want to tell you that I am so sorry I didn't get my midweek up on time. Maybe this will come out Wednesday night, maybe Thursday morning. I had a bit of a setback yesterday. Plus we had the very busy weekend and another one coming up. I woke up yesterday morning and thought perhaps maybe I had a, a little kidney infection, but I went to the doctor because I am paranoid about that. And I think it turned out to be a pulled muscle in my side, thank heavens. But the doctor did give me some antibiotics just in case because I did not want to be sick for the weekend. So thank heavens all is well, but I did have a setback in not being able to get this video up earlier. So thanks for your patience. I love you all. The comments are fabulous. Hope you'll enjoy our little Mother's Day out in. By the way, as you wanted, we will be taking lots of pictures this weekend at our gala. Goodbye for now. God bless us all.